What's going on YouTube? Jeans here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are bringing you guys an Umbreon and Sylveon team for ranked regulation age. Now, when it comes to both of these Pokemon, both of these guys are one of the favorite evolutions. Everybody loves Sylveon. Everybody loves Umbreon, including myself. I actually really like them on the competitive scene, which is why I feel like we're going to have a lot of fun and hopefully grab some wins for you guys with the squad. But let's talk about both of them. Right now, Umbreon's rocking Inner Focus with the Leftovers as item. Obviously, it is a straight Dark type, rocking the Poison Terror type. It's got Snarl, it's got Foul Play, Protect, and Taunt. It kind of works as that slow pace attacker that can drop special attack and deal big time damage to physical attackers. So Umbreon, I really do like it in this format. Sylveon, another evolution that I like in this format. Great special attacker, especially with the Throat Spray like we have today. It's got Pixelate as ability with the Fire Terror type. Hyper Voice, Terra Blast, Protect, and Weather Ball in case we're going up against any weather teams or we have Murkrow on today's team who can set up Rain Dance, so we can always Weather Ball with Sylveon. Our final four Pokemon, all part of the meta, Sneasler, Garchomp, Murkrow, and Golden Ghost. Sneasler doing Sneasler things, this Pokemon is amazing in Regulation H. Garchomp's a great physical attacker holding the Life Orb, Golden Ghost a great special attacker holding the Choice Specs, and then Murkrow doing Murkrow things, Rain Dance, Tailwind, Haze, Foul Play, really solid moveset for ranked Regulation H. Guys, you want to run the team for yourself? Run the code is at the top right hand corner. And if you do enjoy today's video, don't forget to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel. But without further ado, let's hop into match number one, showcasing this Umbreon and Sylveon team. First match on its way for today's video, and we are going up against an Archaludon team. They also have Alola Nine Tails to set the weather, which kind of makes me just want to lead Murkrow, considering Murkrow can just change weather or it can pop Tailwind depending on the situation. So honestly, I like Murkrow here for the lead, and I also really like. Garchomp. I think Garchomp is a solid lead. We're going to end up leading them both. So Garchomp, Murkrow are going to come in here in the back end. We could end up going in with Sylveon, and that is another Pokemon I do like here. And did we bring Umbreon just to have a double evolution? Eh, I don't really like it. I'd rather go in with like Golden Go. Or even Sneasler. Or even Sneasler. Ooh, Sneasler. Ooh, Sneasler. I think we might go Sneasler. I like this Pokemon. 189 speed, close combat, direct law. I mean, close combat's going to be super effective not only into the King Gambit, but into the Ursaluna and Arch Ludon. And the direct law can be super effective into Ninetales. And you got the Focus Sash. The Focus Sash rocks, man. The Focus Sash is just so good. It's just so good. There has been... I think that item is the most winnable item like there has been countless matches where it's just like okay it's a one-on-one -on -one. they hit me for big time damage i focus sash up i get the final hit i win the game the focus sash has won me countless games so can't go wrong with focus sash you cannot go wrong with focus sash but i wonder who they're gonna lead here we got sylveon we got garchomp i do l really like garchomp for the lead here they're gonna end up going sneasel king gambit so i mean they can fake me out they can do a lot i think we just protect garchomp this turn to try to like gauge out what they're doing but yeah, we're just going to set up this Tailwind, get everything cooking for us, and I'm just going to protect Garchomp. Because there is a hot chance that they do Fake Out. Some Caesars don't rock Fake Out in this format, but we're just going to play it safe again. Play it simple, play it safe. Love to get off this Tailwind. Love to get off this Tailwind. But yo, did any of you guys watch Thursday Night Football or play Fantasy? Because your boy's got Jamar Chase, and he dropped 55 points for me. 50 burger for Jamar Chase. 11 receptions, I think it was 264 yards. And three touchdowns. Please tell me some of you guys have Jamar Chase on your fantasy team. Or hopefully none of you guys reversed him. Because it was awesome for me. I was cheering all night. My boy Jamar Chase. That's my guy. That's my guy. Putting up big time numbers. That is a huge start for Thursday Night Football. Yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. But they're going to end up terrestrializing to King Gambo Gambit. Into a nice lovely flying terror. So, going to have to watch out for that. But I like that this typing better than its other typings. I do. I do. So Protect comes out from the chomp. Are they going to fake out the chomp? That's the real question. No fake out. So I guess this thing isn't rocking fake out. We're going to be able to set up a tailwind. Get some nice speed control cooking. And he's going to... Ooh. <laughs> this thing's got to chill out. You got to chill out here, King Gambo. You got to chill out here, King Gambo. Terra Blast going to launch and we're just going to block it. All right. You got to chill out there, King Gambo. That's enough out of you. That's definitely enough out of you. Uh, we're just going to haze. Get rid of these stat changes. And then I just EQ. Bring the Sneasler probably down the Focus Ash. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. 
See, I can't let this thing boost up too much. I was gonna Dragon Claw it, but after seeing Haze, I was just like, all right, we can just Haze these down. So I'm just gonna Haze up, get rid of all these stat changes. They'll probably go for another coaching here, like, like let's be honest here. And hopefully you're not Focus Ash, but you're, you're probably Focus Ash, and then you'll just unburden boost. That's the real problem here, but still, I'll take that. If we end up doing that, there's Focus Ash. Um, that's fine by me. And you're going for another coaching? Hot chance that you're doing that. Nope, going for straight Die Claw, which I don't mind. I do not mind. Paralyze, I kind of mind that, but we'll deal with it. Terrible is going to launch here. He is even on attack board, and that's going to go into the Murkrow slot. So he's going to double down to Murkrow. That's fine. You can take out my Murkrow all day. So Murkrow gone. Good time for us to bring out Sylveon and Terrastalize it because chances are Dire Claw is launching in that slot. So I can Terrastalize Sylveon here. I can go for Hyper Voice, pick up the KO onto the Sneasler, be able to soak a Dire Claw. Hopefully no sleeps and all that good stuff. And then we can just double down into this King Gambit with the Dragon Claw. I like that. I like that a lot. Now the problem here is Sneasler. Sneasler's a problem. Unburdened Sneasler, pretty sure, or I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure it outspeeds my Pokemon, which is absurd. Like, Unburden, outspeeding Tailwind Pokemon. It never makes sense to me, but it is what it is. I can't control it. I can't control it, but it just never really made sense to me. Let's see what they end up uh, doing here. I think they just go for a Dire Claw into probably that Sylveon slot, which is why, again, I want to Terrasalize. You could end up doubling down to Garchomp, which could get a little rough, but... I mean, if I can get rid of Sneasler and deal some damage into King Gambit, I think we're fine. Especially popping our Throat Spray. That's that, that's the real important part here. It's getting his Throat Spray going and getting Sylveon on the board. So, we'll hit this Tyra button. Nice, lovely fire. Little candles on its head. And what you got here? He's going to end up coaching. He's going to coach up. Um, It's not a bad call. It's honestly a really good call. You're gonna go for. You might be going for Iron Head in this slot too. Let's see how much damage we could do with this uh, Hyper Voice into King Gambit. Not bad damage. Another another Dragon Claw and Hyper Voice will KO, especially with this Throat Spray boost. And hopefully he's going for Iron Head into Sylveon. I really hope so. They have that Fire Terra. He's gonna go Terra Blast. Oh no! Into who? Garchomp? Nope. Into Sylveon. So he's keeping my Garchomp on the field. Sylveon survives. Thank the Lord. But I mean. The problem here now is Sucker Punch can KO me, which is something I really don't like. And Nine Tails comes out here. So to get off some weather, really want to go for Fire Terror Blast, but against Sucker Punch just absolutely rips up into me. I could hard swap into Sneasler here. Hmm. We're hard swapping to Sneasler. I think you go for probably an Aurora Veil, maybe a Sucker Punch here. I'd be super surprised if you don't go for Sucker Punch. I'd be more than surprised. So, we're gonna swap into Sneasler here. Protect the Sylveon. Have Fake Out Raid Roll. And let Ninetales do whatever Ninetales wants to do. Probably Aurora Veil. No, it's just gonna protect. That's fine by me. That's fine by me. And there's a Sucker Punch. So, great call on mine. I can now fake out the King Gambit. And I can rip a Hyper Voice, or do I rip like a... Actually, we can rip a Weather Ball. We can just double down this slot. Don't protect King Gambit. Please don't protect King Gambit. Please don't protect King Gambit. Ends up with all nine tails. Okay. As long as there's no protect on King Gambit here, this is a huge turn for us. This is a huge turn for us if there's no protect. No protect. That is massive. That is massive. That is massive. We get poison touch. It doesn't matter. We're going to be able to pick up the KO right here. Where the ball's going to launch. That is a massive turn for us. So now we're sitting here. Um, I'm hoping my Sneasler can simply just outspeed this Ninetales and I can get off some turns. But there is a shot that or a chance that they do end up protecting here. I still have Focus Ash. I still have Garchomp, which is really good. I don't want to stamina boost this Arch Ludon too much here. But a great turn for us to end up swapping Sneasler. That was huge. Um, I could rip Terror Blast. There is a chance that they do end up protecting. And honestly, I think we just... I think we just go Terror Blast here into Arch Ludon. 
And if I can get off a Diracle, actually, I'm going to double down on Archlunan. There's a hot shot that you protect Ninetales. There's a hot shot that you protect Ninetales. I'm doubling straight down to Arch Ludon, who most likely doesn't have protect. He doesn't even protect Ninetales, but still. Love the damage there. Let's get rid of this thing. And this thing's actually sturdy. He's actually real sturdy with it. He's real sturdy with it. So sturdy's gonna come out here. Ninetales probably KO in Sylveon. Can you soak this Sylveon? No, you don't. Do not freeze me. Don't don't do it. Don't do it to me. And honestly, I think we lose this game now. I think we lose this game. I think we lose this game. I don't think Garchomp has the mustard to pick up a double KO here. Plus, I think Ninetales outspeeds me. Yeah. One ice move finishes me off. Man, that, that that's, a, that's a hurtful loss. That's a hurtful loss. That's a real hurtful loss. Maybe I should have just protected Sylveon there. I mean, it really wouldn't have mattered because then Blizzard would just came out and pick up the KO. So that sturdy was huge. That sturdy was was real big. Sturdy over stamina. It's been working well in this format, but yeah, that's pretty much game for me. I mean, I, obviously, I gotta go for an EQ, but I mean, he's just gonna go for a Blizzard outspeed me. Say night night, say good game. Unless you somehow outspeed Garchomp. I mean, I don't think you do. A lot of night tiles are faster. Yeah, see, game set match. Solid first match all around. Let's be honest here. Came down to the wire. That sturdy ability really clutched up. We're sitting at 0 one. Moving on to our second match, and the team that we're actually going up against is a team that I did showcase on the channel. It's a Belly Drum Snorlax team, so I'm terrified. I'm not going to sit here and lie. I am terrified. I do have Haze Murkrow, which I am so leading here. I am so leading this Pokemon. I got to worry about a lot. I can set up Tailwind. I can Haze if they set up Belly Drum. I like it. I really do like it. I am kind of worried about Torkoal here, so I might just go into like Umbreon. I think just being able to snarl a lot of these special attackers really works well for us. So I am going to end up going into both of them. So that's going to be the play call. Um, hmm. What else do I bring here? Chomp Goldigo? Chomp Goldigo is not bad. Yeah, we're going to go Chomp Goldigo. So Chomp Goldigo is going to be our final two Pokemon. This one's going to be kind of tough, but I'm hoping they lead Snorlax and I'm hoping they try to pull off Belly Drum because I'm just going to stop it right in its tracks. I'm just going to stop it right in his tracks. And I got to remember, it has the Kusat Berry, which is a first turn priority berry. Yeah, we're going to have to watch out for that. Definitely getting scary. here. Definitely getting scary. But Torko Logan come out here. We're just going to set the rain, get rid of all this weather. And I think we'll just snarl up. Make life pretty simple for us. They could sleep powder me, but I mean, we should be fine with this. So rain dance, bop, snarl, bop. Quick turn one. We're sitting on one, but I think we can win this match and get things... Get things rolling on the right side of the field. Now, let's see. What are you rocking with? Hopefully they just stay in here. Hopefully they just go for like an after you kind of play. That's really where I'm at. I want them to do that. So I'm just going to set up this lovely little rain dance. Say bye bye to the sun. And we're expecting the rain. And he's going to put Murkrow to sleep. So Murkrow goes night night. Umbreon should go first, which is great news. Be able to get off this Snarl, take off Focus Ash if Logan has it. More importantly, get that special attack drop onto the Torkoal. So Murkrow slumped. I'm going to have to waste out some turns try to wake this Pokemon up. There's Eruption. Should do minimal damage. Yeah, awesome. Beautiful. We love that. So minimal damage flies out here. Um, I think we'll just start foul playing down this uh, this Logan, doing as much damage as we can. And just wasting out some turns and trying to have Murkrow wake up. Do we foul play that? You could keep snarling because you might even swap. Probably into a special attack. Let's just keep snarling. Let's snarl one more turn. See what? They, see how they play this one. Yeah, this withdrawal Torkoal. The Torkoal with the withdrawal. Maybe Snorlax, or are we gonna see another special attack? It is Snorlax. Snorlax comes out here, close combat, gonna fly. We're gonna be able to soak, which is good news. Can you wake up, Murkrow? Actually, you can't. It's just it's your first turn of being slumped. The Murkrow slumped. Hmm. And I could just hard swap into... I know you have Brock Slide with, uh, with Snorlax, which is a slight issue. But I might just hard swap into Gold and go here. Especially if you're launching close combats. I'm not going to end up saving this thing. I'm going to go for a foul play if I can. I'm going to hard swap into Gold and go here. 
So we'll keep our Umbreon. We know they got Torkoal. I kind of need my, my Murkrow here. I think that there is a chance that they just go for straight Rock Slide, but there is also a chance that they go for Belly Drum here. The Close Combat's going to fly. We're going to dodge it, which is huge. And Murkrow's going to wake up here and be able to drop a nice little Foul Play. So foul Play launches. Does solid damage across the board. And there's the Belly Drum. So I know he has Kuset Berry. Um, that would give it first turn priority, but I can just haze and just get rid of these stat changes. It's, it's quite simple. So haze could terrestrialize into steel and then just make it rain. Or I could just choice into a shadow ball. Actually, I'd rather make it rain. I'd rather steal Terra and make it rain, just get rid of both these Pokemon and then have to just worry about the Torkoal because they're not ready for the haze. They are simply not ready for the haze. And they're not going to close combat my Golden Go because we're sitting here ghost type. This is just not happening. So I'm cool with the Steel Terra. I'm looking to pick up a KO here. I'm actually looking to pick up two KOs. And Murkrow, working wonders, man. Working wonders. I know he has the Kusat Berry, but Hayes should go first because he gets priority with the Kusat Berry. I get priority with my Prankster ability, and Murkrow is faster. So there goes the Berry. He's like, ooh, let me eat this Berry. And I'm going to say, oh, is he, he's going to end up withdrawing. You going back in Torkoal? Are you going back in Torkoal? No, indeed, I'll actually take that. I'll take that. I will take that. So Psychic Turing pops out here. He's going to end up terrasizing. Is this Rock? It's Rock Terror Snorlax, right? Yeah, Rock Terror Snorlax comes out here. Right? My calculations should be correct. We should be able to haze before the Snorlax even moves. Even with the berry. I'm almost positive. There's a lot going on this turn. So he terrestrializes, we terrestrialize. I mean, Golden Ghost should be able to soak this regardless of this thing being plus six. Um, but again, I'm really hoping we can just keep our Merkur, because Merkur is a huge part of this team right now. And yeah, he goes first. Bye-bye, stat changes. Bye-bye, plus six. See you later. And here comes Rock Slide. Merkur still might die out here, which kind of sucks. Nope, Merkur survives. That's huge. That's a huge survive there. That is a huge survive. Make it rain, gonna fly. I'm gonna chunk up some big time damage onto Indeed here. Almost picking up the KO. Now could be a turn that we set up a Tailwind, because Tailwind could be good, depending on who they go into. If they go into Torkoal, we obviously have to rain dance. If they go into Logan, we'll just set up the Tailwind. And there is a chance that they go into. Actually, wait a minute. No, they just swapped into Indeed. I was gonna say, is Indeed popping Turker? <laughs> that could have been real ugly. They end up going into Logan. This is where we set up a nice little big tailwind. Get this cooking, and we just throw another make it rain across the board. And then my team could have some speed with tailwind, which is really good. Um, we could have popped the rain dance and predicted the Torkoal swap, but I just think going for the simple tailwind plays is definitely the call. But the thing that would suck is if they swap into Torkoal here. Which they don't. That's that's massive. I was going to say, if they swap in the Torkoal and close combat my Golden Go, but at this point, I get the Tailwind set up. And on top of that, I'll be able to get off one last Make It Rain before Golden Go probably dies out here. And if they leave Merkur on the field, which I would like, I can just set up a Rain Dance when the uh, Torkoal comes out here. But I end up picking up the double KO, no problem. And they turn off their console, so great match for us in match number two. Umbreon over Sylveon picking up a win, so we're one and one making person rage quit. Let's go up to our third and final. So guys, we use Sylveon in match number one. We use Umbreon in match number two. It's match number three. Let's put it together. Let's use both of them here. Screw it. I don't care about the matchup. Let's just use both of them. They got Annihilate, Rillaboom, Talonflame, Ursaluna, Typhlosion, and last but not least, Hisuian Samurai. So they got a cool team as well. Um, do I lead both of these guys? I don't think so. I really don't think so. They got a few special attackers. I mean, Typhlosion, Ursaluna are their only two. Um, I have foul play on the Umbreon. I think Sylveon is just a solid lead across the board here. So I'm going to go Sylveon here to get things started. Um, could end up going Sneasel just to fake out. But I mean, there is a chance that they probably lead Talonflame and just get off Tailwind. Hmm. Maybe I don't even lead Sylveon. Maybe I just go in with like Murkrow Garchomp. Or Murkrow Golden Go couldn't be bad. Hmm. Eh, what do I want to do here? I could go Sneasel or Murkrow. Sneasel or Murkrow could get the party started.
We're going to Sylveon Sneasler. Mm, I don't really know. We're going to Sylveon Murkrow. We'll bring Umbreon in the back end. And last but not least, we're going to end up going into the Chomp. The Chomp. The Chomp Skis. Chompy McChomp Chomp. So we're one and one. I would love to grab ourselves a new marker, but I don't know. This seems tough, especially bringing in Sylveon and Umbreon. I could have probably, like, rather, or I would rather have, like, Golden Go over Umbreon in this situation. But, I mean, hey, I'm making content for you guys. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying today's video. Hopefully, you guys are. Let's end up seeing who they're leading. Let's see what they got cooking. It's going to be Talonflame. It's going to be Roll Boom. All right, I got Sylveon on the field. I got Murkrow chilling here. Uh, fake out. Look at a tad bit scary. Grassy Surge. Coming in hot here. I mean, I do have Fire Terror, but I got to watch out for Fake Out turn one. So I think the smart play is just going to be protect Sylveon and try to stagger these Tailwind turns. So I'm going to protect them. And on top of that, I think I'll just drop a Foul Play into Talonflame here. Just chip up some damage. So protect Sylveon. Hopefully Fake Out is flying into that slot and they're just setting up Tailwind. That would be nice. And no, they Fake Out the Murkrow. How dare you? And you taunt my... How dare you? That's a big time play here. That's actually a big time play for them. But one thing that they don't know is that my Sylveon's fast lessened and ripping a Terror Blast in this side. Actually, I'd rather go for Hyper Voice while they set up Tailwind. Because I want that Throat Spray popping. So I'll do that. I'll end up swapping into Umbreon. And we'll go from there. So I am going to end up Terrasalizing. I mean, the problem here is like Wood Hammer just does an absurd amount of damage in with the terrain. So like I don't I, I can't afford for my Sylveon to just get bopped in the head by the wood hammer and die. Like it's just gonna be terrible. It's gonna be terrible. But I love the animation. I'll give it to I'll give it to Game Freak. The wood hammer animation is just a giant hammer, just bop, see you later. Base 120. Stab with the roll boom in the terrain gets that boost as well. It's absurd how much damage Wood Hammer does with Roll Boom. It is it is legit broken. But now we got the double evolution, shiny double evolution. Both those shinies are unbelievably amazing. We went up to Rasslize and Silva. I'm putting a nice little candle on her head, on her head here. We'll see how they want to play this one. We'll see. That one pops. We've seen that coming. And can I see the wood hammer an animation? There it is. Look at this giant hammer. Bop. We're able to half that. That's that's great news. So he's gonna take a little bit of recoil here. Every voice is going to launch, which is great. I get that throat spray popping. And I can see them doubling down on Sylveon here. They're probably staring at Sylveon like, hey, I'm gonna double down into it. That's really, really what it's looking at. I probably should have just went for a terror blast there, but I think I could just do this. Protect and then just foul play somebody. Oh, the foul play is style flame. Waste out some tailwind turns too. So we'll protect the Sylveon here. And they are going to end up going for Taunt. That's totally fine. Wow, we could have just attacked with Sylveon. That would have been a nice turn. And he's going to go for a U-turn pivot here. Which we just block. I, wow, I could have just simply attacked. I could just simply attack, but I'll take this turn all day. It's not a bad turn. We get off some foul play damage. Everybody gets back some HP. Um... And if they're gonna hard, if they're gonna look to swap here, who could they go into? Typhlosion? Or Saluna? They really want to rip a Terror Blast. I really do. But I mean, I'm just gonna rip another Hyper Voice. If they're if they're looking to U-turn pivot, I think Hyper Voice is definitely a play. So I'll do that, and I will end up swapping into Murkrow. And then getting off Tailwind, and we and we can save Umbreon on top of that. I like that. I like that. I'm hoping it's Hyper Voice does KO though, the the the, uh, the Talon Flame. So I'll swap back into Murkrow. We're gonna end up going for a Brave Bird, which does not KO us, which is great. You just recoil damage goes crazy. You're gonna U turn again? You are gonna U turn. We should soak this. Awesome, gorgeous, lovely. <coughs> and the combination of recoil damage with this Hyper Voice should KO this uh, this Talon Flame. Let's see what they go into. I think they're going to go into Typhlosion. I think they think we're ripping a Terror Blast here. Yep, there's Typhlosion. The Typhlosion comes out here. We're now going to be able to send a Hyper Voice. Deal great damage. Get rid of Talon Flame. And next turn, I can pop... Mm, 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 mm. They're going to go back and roll boom. I was going to say, I could pop a Tailwind. 
But how many turns are left in their tailwind is the real question. Are they going to go back into Rillaboom? Hopefully not. I do. You son of a biscuit. How many turns are left in their tailwind? It's only one, so I mean... I don't mind just simply protecting and trying to go for Tailwind. They're probably picking up Merkur again, but I don't mind it. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. As Merkur, can you survive this eruption? Probably. Probably not. Flamethrower, can you soak this? I love you forever. I love you forever, Merkur. I love you forever, because now their Tailwind's gone. We can set up our Tailwind. I could go into Terra Blast, look to dump on the Rillaboom, or I could just rip another Hyper Voice and chunk damage all around. They could end up swapping real boom. I think Hyper Voice is our play. Let's just keep doing as much damage as we can. So Hyper Voice into a Tailwind. Finally, I get off this Tailwind. Took me long enough, right? We were able to waste out their Tailwind. But swapping Murkrow in for Umbreon was a huge play for us. Murkrow was able to soak up a ton of shots. I think they do end up swapping real boom just to save it for another turn, which is why I want to go for Hyper Voice. But, I mean, they just protect Typhlosion. That, that works fine. And I could have went into a Terror Blast. I could have, but I mean, this this is fine. This is totally fine. Now, do they still have Terra? I think they do. They definitely do still have Terra. Hyper Voice does great damage. U turn's going to not KO us. Wow, we gotta they leave us for another turn for Sylveon, which is just absurd. Why are you keeping my Sylveon on the field here? Just leave my Sylveon on the field. They still have Terra type, and Samurott's gonna come out here. So now is gonna be where they terrestrialize. And it's probably a poison terra, if I had to guess. It's most likely a poison terra, but uh, again, I don't, I don't mind just getting off this, this damage right here, right? This damage is is big for us. So I got that. I got Umbreon in the back, and I am going to foul play into this Typhlosion just to do as much damage as I can because chances are we get off some damage, then we die out, and then we bring out Umbreon and Garchomp here, which I mean, Robum's still scary. Robum is still scary. We got foul play. We got that thing pretty lower on HP, which is good. And we're just going to rip another Hyper Voice. So out comes Terra. Like I said, it's probably poison. It's most likely poison. I know it's water. Okay, I don't mind water. Hyper Voice is still going to do respectable damage in that slot. But again, he's just going to pick up KOs onto me after this. I'll take that all day. And you got Sucker Punch. Wow. You got Sucker Punch. So what's the point of Thrasilizing? You could have saved it. You have Sucker Punch. How dare you? At least Foul Play is going to do a little bit of damage into you. And Flamethrower is going to launch. So I got Umbreon. I got Garchomp. I have two turns left in Tailwind. I should have two turns left in Tailwind. And it's going to come down to the wire. Full HP Umbreon, by the way. Full HP Umbreon. So I could Snarl. One's physical attacking, one's special. Um... Foul play is not going to KO Typhlosion. Stomping can't tremble. There is a chance you swap Typhlosion. There is a hot chance that you swap Typhlosion. I'm going to double down on the Samurott. I'm doubling down on the Samurott. There's a hot chance you swap Typhlosion in the Rillaboom. <clears throat> There's a hot chance. Or you could just... Mm, no, you're not going to protect Typhlosion. I do like double down to the Samurott, though. They're, I, I think they're, I think you might swap your... You swap Samurott the wrong side. I mean, this is fine, though, too, because we're just going to KO you. So I'll get rid of this thing. Rillaboom's gone. I'm really hoping the first move KOs this Rillaboom so the other one slides over. Oh, and Typhlosion does protect. Oh, wow. That works. <laughs> that works for us. Dragon Claw launches. This is going to KO Rule Boom. Bye bye. And now we could do the same thing, or I could just attack this Typhlosion now, which I think is going to be the play. Because now that he protected, it, we can just stomp and cantrum, attack that thing, and then just foul play the other slot. I'm cool with that. I'm definitely cool with that. That works. Problem is, ground moves are going to be affected by this terrain, but stopping Kitchen is still going to KO the Typhlosion, so I'm not worried about it. Um, so yeah, I think just a nice little foul play is our call here, into a stomping Kitchen, into the Typhlosion. 
And as long as this thing's not rocking like any ice moves, we should be fine. Stop it, Tantrum goes first. Bop, see you later, Typhlosion. Get on out my face. We got a crit, just rub it in. You were dead regardless. I do not want to hear the comments being like, Jeans, you're winning this one because of RNG. Nah, yo, that Typhlosion was dead regardless. We take some life orb damage. Foul play's gonna launch. Do you respectable damage? That's respectable damage. And you got Razor Shell. It's gonna do some damage. Can you soak this, please, Garchomp? Yes! <laughs> yes, Garchomp! Razor Shell did some damage. Rough skin damage as well. Yes, Razor Shell. Or not Razor Shell. Yes, Garchomp. That pretty much wraps it up. I can foul play away. I can Dragon Claw as well. And we're gonna go 2 1 for today's video. So after losing the first match, we make an opponent rage quit. Then we have a great third and final match. Our opponent played really well here. But there's Dragon Claw. GG's. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, Umbreon and Sylveon team grabbing you guys a winning record with it. I absolutely love it. Sylveon, always so strong, especially with the third spray. And Umbreon, just a solid Pokemon all around. Snarls go crazy up against special attackers. Foul play, always doing respectable damage. You really can't go wrong with it. And then for the rest of the team, I can't say much about them. They're just meta Pokemon. They did their jobs. They did exactly what we needed them to do. This team was a lot of fun. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smash that like button for me. And if you're new here, click that big red subscribe button so you know when all of my videos go live. Seriously, you guys rock out. Make sure you spread some positive today, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.